Greetings brothers, today we're talking about the successor chapter, the Flesh Terrors, why now is a good time to run them, what's their strengths and weaknesses, and how I would pilot them to get the most out of them in 9th edition. Greetings brothers, I'm John the BA Commander and every week on this channel we do various content designed to help you be a better 40k player or get more out of the hobby. If at any point in this video you find yourself enjoying it or getting some value, I'd love it if you could hit the like button so it could spread to some other people. Let's get into the strength of the Flesh Terrors and a good place to start with this would be to compare the Blood Angels chapter tactic against the Flesh Terrors chapter tactic. Now, we know for Blood Angels it's plus one to advance and charge rolls. Each time this model makes a melee attack, if it made a charge, was charged, or heroic intervened, you get plus one to your wound roll. So for the Flesh Terrors, it's pretty similar. Uh, the same part applies to the second part. If a model made a charge, was charged, performed a heroic intervention, it's the same plus one to your wound roll. However, no advance and charge here. What they do have is an unmodified wound roll of six, Improve the armor penetration characteristic of this attack by one. This is cumulative with the bonus from the Assault Doctrine if it is active for your army. However, it seems to be that usually when the Assault Doctrine kicks in as a Blood Angels player, your AP is kind of already good enough. You're kind of pushing the enemy onto any invulnerable saves they may have or onto no save if that's even possible. So my opinion on the Flesh Terror's chapter tactic here is it's much stronger in turn one and two. Right? And I think that's how we typically see pl Flesh Terrors players play. They go for early engagements, trying to get in and score those wound rolls of six to get those extra points of AP. And that's something to keep in mind as we go through this and we talk about their synergies and their strengths. So what are the strengths and tactics for Flesh Terrors? So I would say incursors to back up sort of turn one aggression, trying to get into combat early, get those extra points of AP from your exploding sixes. Death Company with lots of chainsaws are good here. You know, there's a lot of a, a potential to score in X and minus one AP. You know, backed up with Unleash Rage or Quake Bolts, they can definitely get essentially exploding sixes, more attacks, more hits, more AP. Um, Vanguard Veterans and Company Veterans with Lightning Claws. Again, Lightning Claws are good here because any misses can potentially be re-rolled and that's another chance to get a 6. So Lightning Claws are arguably one of the best close combat weapons that the Flesh Terrors could use. We can also use a Drop Pod with Seth and something else inside it. Seth is pretty cool in a Drop Pod. We're going to come back to Seth in a little bit. We've also seen Flesh Terrors use uh, Dreadnoughts for early aggression, sometimes in Drop Pods. So Sangry Guard are pretty interesting on the Flesh Tears. We talk about now how the Axes are just generally better because there's so much Toughness 5 stuff in the meta. They're still going to typically wound Toughness 5 stuff on 2s and any 6s is going to give them that additional minus 3 which is going to help I think because a lot of times the Sangry Guard, the Axes feel like they don't have enough AP in the early game so Flesh Tears, Sangry Guard Axes is pretty cool. Uh, and the common MVPs of Space Marine lists are obviously decent here as well. Redemptors, Relic Contemptors, the Chaplain on the Bike, Terminators, Blade Guard Veterans. These things are all good in Flesh Terrors. I mean, they're kind of the core. They're the things that Space Marines are relying on right now to kind of be semi-competitive. I want to talk about their Warlord traits. And there is three of them. And I think the one that I like the most, I guess, is Creation Born. And that is basically, if you declare a charge, you can reroll the charge. The enemy cannot fire Overwatch. We also have Wrath and Rage, which basically means you make an additional hit any time you score a 6. Probably you only get like um, 5 or 6 attacks on a Warlord, so you're probably looking at like 1 additional hit, really. I think it's low value, I think there's better ones you could take. Uh, Imperium Sword from the Marine Codex gives you basically an 1 additional attack. So it's, it's very similar. And then Merciless Butcher is kind of like your death vision in that if you're fighting and there's additional enemy models around you, for every five within three inches, you're going to make some additional attacks up to three. Again, it's pretty situational. Sometimes, once a game, maybe you'll get a few extra attacks out of here. I think if you were going to try and get better attacks or more attacks. There's other Warlord traits you could take. I also want to talk about Seth because he's going to be like a key figure as we go into this. Now, Seth is a firstborn model who was recently discontinued. So if you didn't get him, you're maybe going to have to wait for him to come back. He may also be going Primaris. There's a little bit of lore about how like he didn't trust the Primaris, but now he kind of trusts them, but he thinks that the chapters are being watered down. I'm not a huge lore guy. It's pretty interesting, though. Go read um, Devastation of Baal if you haven't read it. 
absolutely shameless plug there is a link to audible in the video description where you can get a free audible book uh, from the uk or the us store if you do that and get a free book you know devastation of Val is on there and doing so obviously helps this channel out a little bit as well so i'd appreciate if anyone hasn't done that they can do that now and also that free trial renews every year so if it's been a year since you got a free audiobook now is the time find the link in the video description hit up audible and claim your free book anyway Let's get into Seth. He has a strength times two, minus two, three damage chain sword. So that's essentially strength eight. Remember, he's getting plus one to wound from the chapter tactic, minus two, three damage. He gets five attacks, so arguably that would be six on the charge because of Assault Doctrine. And he can fight twice, which is pretty cool. At the end of the battle round, uh, Seth will be able to fight again if he's within engagement range. Now, the interesting thing with Seth is Flesh Tears core units within six inches of this model, if they make an unmodified wound roll of six, that increases the damage characteristic of the attack or the weapon by one. So again, Lightning Claws, super useful here. So you're re-rolling all your missed wounds, and any wound that rerolls as a 6 is essentially a 2 damage lightning claw at AP minus 3. He's obviously the chapter master, so he has that aura and then he of reroll 1s, and he can also give one core unit within 6 or a character, reroll everything. His warlord trait is also Merciless Butcher, so again, for every 5 models within 3 inches, you're going to be able to get potentially some additional attacks. I don't know if you have to take him as your warlord. I mean, like I said, it's maybe just going to burst one additional attack, but he does get a fight twice. So there's like a double whammy on the ability of him, essentially, to use his warlord trait. Potentially gives you two extra attacks, sometimes even more. Now, why is Seth important? Because the drawback with Seth is he doesn't have a jump hack or anything, right? So we need to get him into a transport, really, to make him effective. And this is a question that got asked, you know, should we run Seth or should we run a custom chapter master? And the answer really is Seth is slow and he's not that survivable. So one of the main ways to try and deploy him would be the drop pod, a Tarax drill. And if you do this, you're probably going to need to combine him with like a chaplain with Canticle of Hate and possibly Icon of the Angel, so you're just giving yourself the best chance of him getting into combat. So Canticle of Hate would give you that 7-inch charge from Deep Strike, and Icon of the Angel would let you re-roll that, and the key bonuses of Seth, obviously, is the 6s can burst that one additional damage, and the 6s also burst an additional AP, his Blood Reaver essentially is 4 damage at that point, he would get 6 attacks plus more attacks if there's models within 3 inches, and he can fight twice. So there's no denying that Seth can do an absolute buttload of damage if you can get him in. It's going to depend on the opponent's screening, but he is a cool character. I kind of like him, and if you've got a drop pod or something other... Drop pod's cool because you can get it in turn one. Terex drill is okay coming in turn two or something like that. What are the key bonuses of a custom chapter master? That would be like survivability, angel sacrifice, jump pack and maneuverability. We all seen the custom chapter master. If you haven't seen my custom chapter master, do you know what? I'll put a link to this video up above. I basically built the best chapter master you can run in ninth edition. He's absolute boss. Uh, click on the video. You can check it out if you haven't watched it before. Let's talk next about some of the relics that the, and stratagems that are unique to the Flesh Terrors, and they just have a couple. They have the Crimson Plate, which is essentially Terminator armor, but it's going to give the bearer a plus one movement, so that'll be a six inch movement on a Terminator. He can also charge in any turn he advanced, and he can pile in and consolidate four inches. So just basically a much more maneuverable Terminator. Maybe you could make a like, Librarian Terminator with this armor and like jack him up with some sort of like warlord trait to give him like rerolls of charge and extra attack could be pretty interesting uh, i don't mind the crimson plate at all it's the only way in the entire codex blood angels or flesh tears and that there's a model that can advance on charge and uh, that's pretty cool that's something that i feel like blood angels really miss out on no abilities at all to advance and charge they also have sever which is basically a chain sword uh, kind of like the Teeth of Terror here, plus 2 strength, minus 2 AP, 2 damage, but on 5 pluses you're inflicting a mortal wound. So I guess the Teeth of Terror is basically going to give you more attacks, probably more reliable damage, but the Severer is going to do like a couple less attacks. On a, on a captain or something, you know, you're probably going to get 5 attacks, so if you imagine that you're probably wounding on 2s or 3s, and then 5 pluses are mortals, potentially a couple of mortal wounds. It's not a bad chainsword, 
I just think I don't think it's significantly different to the Teeth of Terror, uh, which is a little bit disappointing. You would all, almost hope that it was. Uh, we also have Aggressive Onslaught, which is basically one flesh terror unit from your army for one CP. Uh, can move an initial three inches for a pilot in or consolidation, which can help you with wrapping and trapping. You can essentially move six inches. You kind of get that from Canticle of Hate anyway, but it could be useful. Uh, maybe like a Forlorn Fury Death Company, you really want to wrap something, potential. And then Savage Destruction, which is basically until the end of the turn, subtract one for combat attrition tests taken from a unit that is with an engagement range of flesh terrors. I don't think this is all that great. Um, I mean, leadership is lower value in ninth edition. I don't know. I would, I would feel like you're paying one CP. You maybe kill one extra model, dependent on the size of the squad. It would need to be a reasonably big squad, one or two extra models. It might be worth it, but to me, it seems like a bit of an edge play. Maybe if you just have a CP kicking around, you play Savage Destruction. So which units are going to perform better for Flesh Tears? And this really comes down to turn one and two. If you think about like certain enemy models, by the time you start hitting them with like minus three, which you know, Lightning Claws, Thunderhammer, Sanguary Guard Axes, arguably the three strongest things in the Blood Angels or Flesh Tears arsenal. Once they get to minus three, they either hit the enemies in vulnerable save or make them have no save, or maybe they're just saving on sixes. So I really think that the Flesh Tears chapter tactic is strongest in turn one and two. And I think this is why we see Flesh Tears players lean into going really offensive, going for turn one charges, going for wrapping up the enemy early. And that's something that Blood Angels really can't do all that effectively sometimes. But then for the Flesh Tears, it really only is proccing on sixes. So you're, you're, you're hoping that you're getting good dice rolls and stuff that typically procs on sixes. I'm not the hugest fan of that, actually, because I don't like that sort of RNG. You know, RNG on a 50-50 roll is fine. RNG on a 16% roll can go either way. And this is one of the things that we've seen with the Volcon Contemptors, right? Sometimes Volcon Contemptors are amazing, loads of mortal wounds. Other times they're trash, zero mortal wounds. And I guess the Flesh Tears are going to end up with the same sort of problem. You could have a game where you can get tons of extra AP in turn one and two, or you could have a game where you literally get nothing. And that makes it kind of difficult to play them, I think. Um, certain other weapons can get a spike of effectiveness, likely weapons with high number of attacks and low AP. I guess one of the one of the things that we talk about at the moment is Reavers are totally trash because of their zero AP. So I guess with Flesh Terrors, because they get a decent amount of attacks, you could potentially get some extra AP on those Reaver knives, which might be okay. And the other thing would be um, large squads of Assault Intercessors with Honor of the Chapter could also be good, but they're like notoriously difficult to deliver on the battlefield just because... I think the only way you can really do it is maybe strategic reserves because no one's running repulsors to deliver assault intercessors and that's the only transport option that we really have. What are the best combos for flesh tears? And I think this is a combo that I've seen variants of, but this is the combo that I would run if I was doing it, I think. So a large squad of death company that are going to fall on fury up the board and most of the death company, I guess, you know, it would be your standard death company, a few thunder hammers, a lot of chain swords. You'd unleash rage for them. So any sixes on the thunder hammers are essentially bursting an extra hit and they're also minus three and, um, you know, the chain swords are better as well. I'd also put Seth in a drop pod. In the drop pod, I'd probably have like five Vanguard veterans with lightning claws. I'd have three company veterans with lightning claws and maybe even put a bolt pistol on one of them with a quake bolt. And then I'd run the chaplain with Canticle of Hate and Icon of the Angel. That gives them an 82% reliability charge, which would be the seven inch charge. You'd need to spend CP to basically guarantee the cast of Canticle of Hate using the commanding oratory stratagem, but I think that would be fine. So you've got Seth, the five anger veterans, the three company veterans, and a chaplain, so that's four charges, 82% reliability. I guess like three of them are getting in on average, I guess, every game. You just have to hope that Seth is one of the people that, that gets in because Seth getting in is kind of really important. You'd also maybe have incursors also putting on turn one pressure with maybe forward deployment on a turn one charge. So this basically gives you massive amounts of turn one pressure, bonus points for every one of these units that can engage the enemy within whilst being within six inches of Seth, because every six now will essentially be one extra damage on the weapon. So if your death company can fall on Fury close to the drop pod, if there could be an incursors forward, you could do a lot of work. This is obviously going to be very situational. It's going to be difficult to do, but against some armies that can't screen effectively, 
this could actually be very deadly. Uh, I think suppressors or whirlwind are going to be key in this tactic to potentially stop some overwatch, like if this was against Tau, you totally need that. And you could even go a step further with maybe a dreadnought drop pod, maybe a forward deployed tactical war suit, even though I don't really like them. I think if you're doing the strategy, you're throwing everything forward really aggressively to try and really put on turn one pressure. Um, and then you could even back the initial up onslaught up with something like Inceptors or a Terax Drill, and that's something I've seen in a few Flesh Terrors lists, is Plasma Inceptors. I think the Bolter ones are okay as well, and then the Terax Drill could bring reinforcements to join up with Seth and do even more damage in a future turn. How do I rate Flesh Terrors against Blood Angels then? And I personally think the Blood Angels are a bit stronger. The Flesh Terrors tend to pack more of a punch in turn 1 and 2, uh, unless you're running a Sangry Priest, uh, for the Blood Angels, and then you can get that Assault Doctrine earlier, and potentially that could even edge you ahead, because Assault Doctrine gives you that army-wide um, additional AP1, as opposed to the Flesh Terrors that are only getting it on sixes. But, I think if you're playing Flesh Terrors, it obviously can be pretty fun. Uh, you are relying on enemy screening and exploding sixes, but in some matchups, you could just run right over the enemy. And yeah, this is actually my first video on Flesh Terrors. We occasionally review Flesh Terrors lists on the Army List show. So this is where I got a bunch of my knowledge and some of the some of the information you've seen in this list. But I made a video last week on Codex Creep and how how Codex Creep is making it so difficult to play and be effective as a Marine player this deep into ninth edition. So if you want to try and have something fun or you want to try something different then maybe Flesh Terrors is a cool option for you. I myself have actually been reading through Codex Black Templar. I just wanted to get a handle on why they're about 15% ahead of us in terms of competitive win rates at the moment. So I think it's definitely a time to look around, try different things, learn different strengths, and as always, if you have any comments you want to leave on the channel, leave them down below in the video, and I will definitely try and answer them. I'd love to hear from some of your hardcore Flesh Terrors players and tell me if I missed anything that was wrong. And do you know what? The, the best comment I will pin to this channel so you get a little bit of bragging rights. If you didn't watch my video last week where I talk about Codex Creep and what the state of it is in 9th edition and how you could still get on and win games and enjoy the game, I'd love it if you would check it out. Uh, so I will link it up here. We also have a balance slate coming next week. So hopefully we'll see some further love for the Sons of Sanguinius. I don't think the last balance slates of Mephiston and Death Company points drops made too much difference. I really appreciate you watching to the end of my videos every week. If you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you did get any value out of today's video, please hit that like button. I'm hoping to be back next week with a live game and we might actually bring the Black Templars onto the channel for the first time to see how they do. I will be running them as my red painted blood angels, but it should be interesting just to see some of the other rules that the other chapters have. Hopefully I'll catch you guys all in the next video. Until then, by the blood are we made strong brothers. Peace.